What's up guys, I'm Nizio Cole, and one of the most important aspects of a game's story are the characters. So today we're going to be counting down my top 10 favorite video game characters of all time. Now in this video I didn't want to cheat so I limited myself to one character per game. So before we start I just want to let you guys know that there will be spoilers for these games. So if you haven't played them just skip to the next section. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. What is this? For number 10, we have Jack Joyce from Quantum Break. Was this not the coolest thing ever? Okay, maybe not to everyone, but I think it's really cool. And now, while this game may have underperformed critically, I enjoyed it. Personally, I love the game and the story, but we're not talking about the story, we're talking about Jack. Playing as him, putting myself in his shoes really makes me feel like an actual superhero with powers. And while I didn't feel as connected to his personal story, I absolutely loved playing as him. While playing, I found myself getting lost in the powers and experimenting with them as if I had actual superpowers. And I love that Remedy gives us the freedom to be able to experiment with them, like creating those time bubbles and then shooting the bullets and then watching them collapse and your enemy dies. Honestly, one of the most creative ways to go about killing an enemy in my opinion. But yeah, as far as video game superpowers go, I think Jack's got everyone beat. Until you put your portal device in the incinerator over there. At number 9 we have Virgil from Portal Stories Mel. Honestly going into this game I didn't expect much, but after playing I can say that Virgil honestly fits right in with the Portal universe. If you don't know, Portal Stories Mel is a fan made prequel to Portal 2 that Although, technically, it's not canon, it's such a well-made game that I consider it to be. I mean, this is a fan-made game, and Virgil feels like an actual character that could be in a first-party Portal game. I like how at the start he pretends to be Cave Johnson and follows you all throughout Aperture like Wheatley, but better and not evil. Honestly, one of the better sidekicks in video games, like the, the perpetual sidekicks that follow you around the entire game. I would say it definitely had a more satisfying conclusion than Portal 2, with a pretty heartwarming conversation with Virgil. Coming in at number 8, we have Rico Rodriguez from Just Cause. Rico Rodriguez is the definition of the word explosion. Just going from island to island, taking down one dictator after another. This guy is like the Tom Cruise of video games. I love the fact that everywhere he goes, there's some sort of explosion, and he somehow always walks away unharmed. I mean, this man literally flew through a tornado, but besides that, nothing much else to say. Great video game character as far as playing as him goes. Got to find a Greek fire vessel first. At number seven, we have the one and only Lara Croft. The main reason I put her above Rico is the fact that it's a bit more realistic. And I think the story is a lot better in my opinion. A lot more backstory and lore in Tomb Raider versus the kind of wily coyote I just flew through an explosion on my Bavarian powered jet suit atmosphere of just cause. I mean, sorta. It's a lot more rugged and real feeling. Lara Croft is an absolute tank and ha absolutely has to be traumatized. Some people have their thing, but that's just not me. And then after the first time escaping, you go back for a second time, and while I haven't played the third game, I really want to play it, I'm assuming it involves going into some dangerous situation on her own. And that's exactly what I love about her. At number 6 we have Bagley from Watch Dogs Legion, and I talked about this in my review of the game, but I love his sarcastic nature. It really adds a lot of depth to his character and the fact that he's an AI that's mass produced that's reprogrammed by DeadSec to help them destroy his creators is really cool in my opinion. That'd be like convincing Siri to make Apple go bankrupt. Makes a little less sense in our time, but Legion? Honestly, I love that aspect of the story. Just the fact that he's an AI sidekick slash information giver is so much cooler than the standard guy in the chair. Halfway through we have Chloe Price from Life is Strange. And before you say anything, I know I said no repeat games, but for this one I'm more talking about Before the Storm Chloe. And if you think about it, there was nothing really too likable about Before the Storm Chloe. As in an amazing innovative character type, she's just your stereotypical rebellious teen. At least that's how it seems from Max's perspective in the first game. In Life is Strange Before the Storm however, we actually get to play as her. Sure, we hear about William and Max moving away and Rachel in the first game, and we even get to play the mission right before William goes off to die, but actually experiencing it through the eyes of Chloe before Max returns to Arcadia Bay is so much different. 
all throughout the first game, I saw Chloe and I felt bad for her and I always kind of wondered in the back of my mind how she came to be the person she is today. And we get that in Before the Storm. Kind of sucks just watching all this stuff happen to you. I enjoyed playing as her. I enjoy seeing how things play out from her perspective, how she deals with all the loss in her life. And that's why she's number five on this list. Coming in at number four, we have Wrench from Watch Dogs 2, who, in my opinion, is where most of the character design in Watch Dogs 2 went into. Not saying that any of the other characters are bad necessarily, but Wrench is just so much better. Besides Ray, all the other main characters are new, and we barely get any of the background information or exposition about any of the other characters. Especially Marcus, who, by the way, is the main character of the game. I mean, we get to know him and his personality through cutscenes and dialogue, and sure there are a few audio recordings talking about his past and motivations to join DeadSec, but they're incredibly vague and we end up just having to guess. Wrench, on the other hand, he's full of character. He loves explosions, has a soft side that's actually revealed all throughout the FBI mission, where he gets kidnapped and his mask gets stolen and we get to see his face. Amazing mission overall, as well as one of the last missions in the game where you're armed to the T with explosives, you really get to feel his character. Overall, I think besides Josh, he's one of the most dynamic characters with the most amount of depth in the game. At number three, we have GLaDOS, who's my favorite AI in all of gaming. You know how earlier in the list I said I love the sarcastic nature of Bagley? Well, GLaDOS is like the OG humorous AI. As far as I know, Portal was the earliest one to do it. Just adding to the ominous nature that is Aperture Science, and even expanded upon greatly in the second game. I really love how deep into GLaDOS and by extension Caroline's character the second game dives into. The fact that you actually have to team up with her forcing them to both learn more about Carolyn and Cave Johnson as well as the history of Aperture Science is one of the most interesting and fun parts of this game. The whole the enemy of my enemy is my friend storyline is great in my opinion and the fact that even after the seemingly shut and dry ending of Portal 2 we're still left open to so many theories because of GLaDOS's nature. Like, did she really let Shell go or did she put her back into a dream state? Did she just kill her and this is just all just fake? We don't know. I find it to be extremely interesting and I think a lot of people would agree with me. At number two, we have Aiden Pierce from Watch Dogs. If you watched my channel before, you had to have known this was coming at some point. This is one of the main reasons I prefer the original Watch Dogs story to the second one. I found Aiden to be much more interesting and in-depth than Marcus, with actual motivations that I could get behind. Now that's not saying that I necessarily agreed with everything he did in the game, and I usually lean to a more non-lethal side in the game unless someone made me really mad and then they gotta go. While playing the game, I had a feeling of urgency, even when there was no time limit. I wanted to complete the mission to be able to see what happens in the next cutscene. It's like that feeling when you have to wait a week for the next episode of a TV show and they leave you on a cliffhanger and you're just like, what's gonna happen next? That's how it felt playing this game. Watch Dogs 1 was the only game in the series where I was able to realistically put myself in the protagonist's shoes and basically become him until I stopped playing. And while I didn't agree with everything he did, I was more interested in the psychology behind why he did what he did. There's actually a really great video essay by Prisma that I highly recommend, link will be in the description. Aiden has so much emotion and weight in the game and it really makes you feel like a vigilante, going all over the place, enacting your own version of justice on the city of Chicago. If Oliver Queen was a video game character, it would be Aiden. Overall, Aiden is one of my favorite video game characters of all time and I can't wait to play as him in Legion. And at number one, we have Max Caulfield from Life is Strange. I talked about this a little bit in my video talking about why Life is Strange is my favorite narrative game. I resonate so well with Max just on a personal level. Even though the game gives you a range of options for you to choose the type of Max you want to play as, either more Chloe or more passive, it's still precise enough that we know what type of person Max is in general. And she just seems like a really cool person to be around that you would actually want to be friends with in real life. I love playing through the game as Max as the person that everyone knows and has an opinion on, whether that be good or bad. I always get a calming feeling when playing this game, even more than Aiden, considering Aiden kills people, but besides that, I can put myself in Max's shoes and really forget about reality and not be me. To be someone who 
moves to a small town in the Pacific Northwest, gets superpowers, reunites with her best friend, goes on adventures, solves mysteries. That's what I love about this game, and more specifically Max. It's so easy to lose yourself in this game, and isn't that the definition of a video game? In my playthrough, Max was one to de-escalate situations and err on the side of caution. Didn't get too aggressive except for when David started yelling at Chloe, and then obviously I'm gonna have to side with Chloe. And I know this is a video about characters, but you can't talk about about the story without talking about the soundtrack and it's amazing it's less of a life is strange soundtrack and more of a max soundtrack considering this is the actual music that she listens to in game i feel like it fits her personality so well and just adds to the calming nature and atmosphere of this game and that is why max is my number one favorite video game character of all time so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what your top 10 or even top 5 is down in the comment section below make sure to like the video and subscribe for more top 10s or just gaming content in general, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.